Hi everyone, my name is Andreas and today we're going to be creating a authoring algorithm within Houdini. This should be fairly simple as Houdini does provide us with most of the nodes that we need, but we're going to be using a little bit of X and a few VOPs to dial in our system. So let's get started. So essentially what we will be doing is we're going to be scattering a bunch of points. And we're going to have to do that in a way so that they are not intersecting. And then we're going to intersect those points with the new set of points. So the first step is to make sure that they are not intersecting with each other, but they have the biggest size possible, basically. So we're going to be computing the closest point and then take that distance to that point and cut it in half. So that way we know how big the radius can be so that it's not intersecting with any other points. So now we have a set of points that is not intersecting. And the next step is to just scatter a new set of points with the same rules and then intersect that with the previous iteration and all the ones that are not intersecting with any of the previous iterations points we put into uh, the same group and then we loop over that and that's how we populate the surface. Let's start by putting down a grid and make that a bit smaller and add a scatter node to scatter some points, maybe 11 and add a copy to points and a sphere to visualize the radii of our points. Let's set the radius to be one. And the next step is to make sure that these points don't intersect with themselves before we start adding additional iterations of points on top of them. So let's start by putting down a point triangle. Oops. And in here, we're going to be using point clouds to essentially find our closest point. Point clouds kind of work like arrays. So they store an ordered list of points based on their distance. And then you can retrieve those indexes or distances to manipulate your data. So the first thing that we need is a handle, which basically returns that point cloud on a pair point basis. And then we need PC open to create the point cloud. And this has a few different parameters. So first our geometry stream, which is zero, then our position attribute, which is P, then the position at which to retrieve set attribute, which is also our position, then the radius in which we want to look for points. I'm just going to type a high number here, but you could proceduralize this with some bounding box of some sorts, but we're just going to type a high number for simplicity's sake. So the next step is to retrieve the distance from this, those points. So let's add a float called distance or dist. And in here we want to use a handy function called PC import by index F, which stands for float and I stands for integer and so on. So these are our data types. Um, this needs our handle which we created two lines above. And then it needs a, ch a specific channel, which is called point distance, which is an attribute that exists within point clouds. And then it needs the index from which to retrieve that point distance, which is one, because the first point is ourselves. So now all that's left to do is scale our P scale based on the half distance to that point. So we take our dist and multiply that by 0.5. So now, as you can see, those spheres are not intersecting with each other. And as we add more points, they shrink in size, but they keep their scaling based on their closest neighbor. All right, so the next step is to put down a for loop with feedback. And we do need a meta import node to import our iteration and num iterations. And we also need a duplicate of the repeat begin. And within this loop, everything that we're doing is going to happen within this loop. So first we want to scatter points each iteration. So when we connect the grid and we want to scatter points, you can see that it's, it's not working. So on the first iteration, we get our points. And then on the second one, we lose them because we are feedbacking the points. So on the next 
on the first iteration, the grid's the input, so it works. And then on the second iteration, the points are the input here. So that's why they disappear. So that's why we need this one to set to fetch input, so that we can scatter points and it fetches the input instead of the feedback every iteration. So when we connect this here, and we start increasing, nothing will change, because we just fetch the input, we scatter points, and we... and we output them here at the end. So once I start doing this, you can see that we get more points, but we do also get the grid, which is not what we want. So that's why we put down a switch. And we switch between this state and this one based on the iteration number. So we go and we create a spare input. And we use our metadata here. And now we can, in here, write an expression, which is a detail expression. Detail then minus one, because we're using the spare input. Then we need our iteration attribute from the metadata, which is iteration. And then the index at w of which to retrieve that attribute, which in this case is zero. But if you were to have a vector attribute and you would like to retrieve the y or the z component, you would need to use one or two. But since iteration is an integer, there's no different channels or different components to that attribute. That's why we need zero. And if that is zero, then we want to switch. So now you can see we have multiple points being scattered. So now we need to set up a group for our new points, which we call PTS. So let's grab a group and attach that here. And also change the input here. And in here, we're just going to group all the points. So those are our input points, input. And we call the group PTS for points. And then on the feedback, we want to remove that group. So we need a group delete. And we delete the group. Perfect. We can also grab our wrangle from over here and put it in between here and the group. So now we, on each iteration, we get our grid, we scatter points, we scale the points so that the radii don't intersect, we put them in a group, and then we merge them with the old points. And the old points are also not intersected. And now the only thing that's left to do is vary the scale of these points, or the number, because as we saw, the scale automatically varies if we change the number of points. So if we look at this, if we add more points, they become smaller and smaller. And if we add less, they, they're, they're quite big. So that's exactly what we will use to change the size of our points. All right, so let's tackle that part. Let's put down a primitive op, sorry, a detail op. And we're going to call this scale. And in the second input, put the meta begin data. Let's create a bit of space here. Call this uh, radii. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to import our two detail attributes. So they're coming from the second input. And one of them is called iteration, which gives us the current iteration. And the other one's called num iterations. And they're both integer. So then we use a fit range. And we want to fit our iteration between 
the maximum amount of iterations and zero. So basically we get a zero to one value out here. So we can use that to use to drive a ramp, which we will set to spline. And we will also create a random seed basically for each iteration. So let's bind that out. So bind export, connect that up and call it seed. And then we need a fit. So now to reiterate on this, we get our iteration and our num iterations, and we scale this value between zero and one. So here we get a ramp up here to fine tune and dial in the size throughout the scattering iterations. So now we can use another fit to fit between the minimum and maximum points that we want to scatter. So let's promote these two parameters. Call them max, sorry, min scatter and max scatter. And then cast it into an integer and also bind it out. And this one we're going to call SC for scatter. So now we have those two detail attributes here. So now we need to link our scatter node, which doesn't exist yet. To these two values. So let's create another spare input and put the scale here. So now we want to drive our for total count with the SC attribute that we created. So detail minus one, then our attribute SC, and then zero. And also our global seed with our seed. Perfect. We don't need the relax iterations. Can turn those off. You can also turn off the max point limit. Perfect. So now we need to dial in some values here. I found I'm gonna copy these from my other file for the ones that I found that worked the best. So Set these to be B spline and then add one at around here. Which is still zero. Then add one at around 0.7, which is gonna be 0 0.02, and then one at point seven seven somewhere and put these up here something similar to this and then for the minimum scatter I put 11 and for the maximum I put a hundred thousand so now all that's left to do is intersect the previous group with the new points so let's put down another point wrangle. Not this one. So in here, first, we are going to have to check whether our point is within that new points group, the PTS group that we created here. So if in point group, zero for a geometry stream, then the name of our group, which is PTS. And then the point number, which is PT num. If that is equal to one, so it's true, so our point is within that group, then we start to execute our intersection analysis. So let's start by creating an array. 
which we call PTS for points. And we're going to use another handy point cloud function, which is called PC find radius. And what this does is for each point, it look for the, the points radius of the currently processed point against the radii attribute of other points. So it basically knows if two radii are intersecting each other and then it returns the point as found and puts it into that array. So this has a few different attributes. First one is always is the geometry stream. Then our position attribute, which is P. Then our P scale attribute, our radius attribute, which is P scale. Then it needs a scaling factor for this radius attribute, which we're going to leave at default. We don't want to scale it anyway. Then it needs the position at which to retrieve these attributes, which is P. Then it needs our P scale attribute. And then it needs the amount of points to look for. And we're going to use two because it'll find ourselves first as well, like before. So now we remove the first index, which is ourselves. So PTS, which is our array, and zero. So now we have an array with one or zero elements in it. And if it has one element, that means it's intersecting with another point. And that means we should remove it. So we need another if statement. If the length of our points array is one. So if it did find another point except itself, then we want to remove our point. Perfect. So now, don't forget to switch on pack an instant instance for this one. So this can get quite heavy. We start to connect this here. You can see if we run two iterations, it's uh, quite coarse because we're only sampling our ramp here basically twice. So one time here and one time here. So as we increase these iterations, you can start to see we're getting a lot more points in between so when we have seven or 10, maybe you can see that we'll probably have, you know, 10 divisions. So we're scattering 11 points once, then 11 again. And then we sort of start to gradually reach the denser amount of points, which is a hundred thousand. So I found that something between a hundred and a thousand iterations works quite nicely and gives quite nice results. So these usually process quite quickly as well. And as you can see, now we do have a set of very nicely packed points on this grid and we can switch out this for any other geometry and it should work. I hope you found this useful and you learned a thing or two and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.